Welcome back to the channel of cleavage. Now we're going with that, it's good. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Shelley. Welcome back to my channel. And another hormone diary. Da, 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 da. When was the last time I did one of these? I have no idea. But we have new titles. Roll the clip. <laughs> that while I was away on holiday. Yes, what do you do when you're on a beach full of middle class dog walkers? You you make a vagina. To be fair, it was a vulva and a, maybe a majora, maybe a menorah. I'm forgetting the words. There's a nice little clitoris going there and there is the vagina. So I decided to make that. Yes, I had rather a lot of fun. Anyway, that wasn't the point of this video, was it? Welcome to the Hormone Diaries in which where I talk, in which where I talk, in English would be good. I've had caffeine. I apologise, but it's the only way I speak. Welcome to the Hormone Diaries where I talk about all things hormonal, all things vaginal, all things that happen to us folk with ovaries. And today's video is brought to you by the word taboo, period, possibly. Basically, I went down the rabbit hole or you could say down the vagina, um, thinking about how did periods become such a taboo? How did talking about the female anatomy become such a taboo? Where does all of the different slang words for, for periods come from? And I went on a mission and I found some answers and I thought I would tell them to you because that's what I do. So growing up, I knew the word period. I also knew the word menstruation, mainly from are you there, God is me, Margaret, because menstruation seemed to be something you just said in America. Here in England, we use the word period. There's also on the blob and most recently shark week. There are many terms for a period, but I wondered why do periods have a code word to begin with? When did this happen? When were we as females um, sort of told that periods are not, not nice? We don't talk about them. Why am I doing this? I'm very animated today. Boobs. But it can't have always been this way, right? And it wasn't. Period taboos are almost universal, but in some societies, a period is revered. It is thought of as a wonderful thing and it's not stigmatised at all. Some societies operate with positive beliefs towards periods. Even the ancient Egyptians in their medical texts wrote that period blood is said to have healing properties and it was used in many of their medicines. They collected it and used it. It was it was thought of as brilliant. So where do the original taboos come from? Well, that's argued. There's a lot of different theories, but one of the winning theories is the patriarchy. Sorry, lads, but it's true. The power and the mystical properties of the period was thought to be too strong and women were getting too powerful. So to control them, men wrote into law that periods were unclean. These taboos and laws are found in the Quran, they're found in the Bible, and they're found in the first Latin encyclopedia, claiming that the mere presence of a woman on her period that can turn wine sour and be unclean. Different. Wine sour. Okay. And when you get to the Bible, the euthanisms come into it. Periods aren't so much as mentioned in their true form. It is her fruits, or her flowers, or the custom of women, or the manner of women. Periods are not named at all. And if you put that into modern terms, today we have Shark Week. So using these creative descriptions and words and phrases creates no emotional tension. They don't evoke power or mystery or gender, vulgarity or politics even. Implying that the word period or menstruation is actually powerful because it's just taken out of text everywhere. Using these euphemisms exposes how distant women have become from their bodies, taking away the ownership of it. Because we start as children, from kids, we don't say the word period. It's all like period, or it's on the blob, or it's something like that. And it sets us up for a lifetime of being separated from our own bodies. These words and phrases hinder our ability to talk openly, and they make things taboo and abnormal because it is not socially acceptable to say the word period even now some people cannot say it out loud they're just like oh I'm, I'm, I, I can't can't do this this week why not um reasons they don't say because I'm on my period even I still have a problem with it if I am talking to a male I'm just like I'm sorry I can't I can't do that this week um why uh reasons I go oh, I'm busy this week 
But the truth is, I'm on my period this week and I'm in a massive amount of pain. And I'm an open person who talks about periods on the internet and I still get uncomfortable because of how I was brought up. Nothing to do with, with the family that I was brought up in or anything, but the society and the pressure from outside is that you don't say the word period. If you were caught saying it in school, you got told off. It was wrong. It was a bad word to say. How is it a bad word to say? I don't understand. If you call a thing by its name, it is revered. And to say on the blob or something like that makes it wrong, makes it... <gasps> You can't say the word period, that's a bad word, which makes the period bad, and it is not. Changing society and lifting this taboo around the word period will take time, but it is happening. From positivity period campaigns to the hashtag just say period, it is slowly, slowly changing. Because a period is a period and we should not frigging be afraid of it. And that is my little history lesson on, on why we say on the blob and shark week and things like that basically the patriarchy sorry lads but you kind of screwed us down there in that area that was the wrong phrase of term anyway i hope you guys are good and have enjoyed my little down the rabbit hole rant or thoughts or discussion or i have no idea i am on caffeine and there are too many things firing my brain right now but i hope you guys are good i will see you next month possibly a little later bye for those of you wondering why there is such a fabulous What A Cunt card on my shelf, it's sort of a spoiler for the next Hormone Diaries episode. Stay tuned for the story of What A Cunt. Seriously, I'm saving up so much information right now that I just want to talk about, but we're not, we're not in that place yet where, where discussions can be had.